Church of Fireball on this fine, fine Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you join with me in prayer? Lord, we thank you for this day, for this day, Lord, that you have gathered us together. And so, Lord, we are so grateful for all that you do in our lives, because we know, Lord God, all the goodness in our life, that it comes from you. All the good that has worked in our life is because of what you do within us, and through us, and for us. And so for this, Lord God, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you thanksgiving for the depths of our hearts. Amen. Lord, we commit this time to you this morning. As we come before you, Lord, I pray that by the power of your spirit, our minds will be focused on you, on your presence, on your power, on your authority over our lives. Lord, let us experience your presence in this hour this morning, Lord God. This we pray, Father, in the name of our mighty and powerful risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Quarter two. Our quarter two collection of support missions near and far. We will be collecting quarters to fill the tube during our announcements. Thank you, Joy. On Sunday, October 20th, Reverend Neil Harris, presiding elder with the Global Methodist Church, will be our guest speaker. After worship, Pastor Neil will host a Q&A session to answer questions we may have about the GMC. Mark your calendars, please, and plan to attend this all-church meeting as we begin discussions on the benefits and purpose of joining the GMC. See the reserve side of your bulletin and search for more information about Pastor Neil and the GMC. Our fall rummage sale will be on Saturday, October 12th from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Our rummage room is open and you are invited to bring new and like new clothing and household goods to our rummage room for our upcoming sale. Our clothing and household items will be sold for $5 per bag and all the funds raised will go into our missions account which is used to support our community outreach ministries. 
We will be hosting lunch at the Senior Center on Friday, October 18th from 10, 15 a.m. to 12 noon. You are invited to join with us as we serve our community get together. Upcoming meetings, our board meeting is on Tuesday, September 24th at 7 p.m. All meetings are held in the Education Building. So ends the announcements. And one other one is, uh, as you will see in your bulletin, next Sunday we're doing an all-church photo. So it's mandatory. Everybody's required to be here. Make sure you get the word out. If you have to pick somebody up, pick them up. And if you have an Olive Branch t-shirt, like Jeremy's modeling it for us today, then wear your, your Olive Branch t-shirt. If you don't have one, come anyway, but wear something. That's all we ask. Um, I actually do have five or maybe six extra shirts, which I'll have available next Sunday in a variety of sizes. So if you would like one and you didn't get one, let me know. I have a few extra. All right? Amen. And I am very excited um, about Pastor Neil coming out next month on the 20th. Again, if you look on the back side of your bulletin insert, you'll see that it's in pink. My sermon's also in pink this Sunday, uh, which adds a little extra color to it, so that's nice. Uh, but uh, you'll get to learn a little bit about Pastor Neil. He was one of the churches that disaffiliated, one of the six in our annual conference. And... Um, and you can learn a little bit more about the, the Global Methodist Church. Their website is there if you want to go check out their website. Uh, this week you'll learn about their vision statement. Um, and they're, they're just right on point with everything because everything they're doing is rooted in Scripture. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. With that being said, let us stand and worship our Lord our God as we sing together in the garden.
Would you join with me in prayer this morning? Let's see. Do we have some little ones today? We have two little ones today? Okay. We have Mercedes. Do we have somebody to go with Mercedes today? Miss Susan? Okay, we're going to send you off to go to the nursery with Miss Mercedes and Miss Susan. Uh, you may need to turn on the air conditioner if it feels a little warm, just so you know. Don't want you to be warm now. <laughs> oh, Lord, you are a good, good Father. You who bless us in so many ways. Even, Lord God, we're a small church, but we're a church of generations. A church of families. A church which is one family in Christ Jesus. And for this, Lord God, we give you thanks. For this, Lord, we give you praise. And so it is, Lord, we come before you this morning with prayers upon our hearts, Lord God, with those joys, Lord, that gratitude which, which fills us because of your goodness in our lives. And for these things, Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you thanks. And we come before you, Lord, because we have great hope within our heart. And so we lift up our hopes to you, Lord God, knowing and trusting that you will work out all that you desire in our lives, Lord, as long as we're willing to work with you in the process. And so, Lord God, we thank you for this, and, and we lift up our prayers of hope to you this morning. And, Lord, we come before you because there are things that are bigger than us, things that are weighing upon us, Lord God, that apart from you, Lord, we'll never overcome. And so we bring those before you this morning as well, Lord. And so I invite you who are here this morning to lift up your prayers, your joys, your concerns to our Lord, our God. Do you have any joys or concerns you'd like to lift up today? I just want to say that uh, I have a praise and I say thank you for my fellow church members. We have prayer warriors in this church. and. Uh, when I, a couple weeks ago, asked for prayer for my neck and everyone laid their hands on me, and, uh, I, the pain's been greatly diminished. I have stopped taking medication really once or twice at the most in the last two weeks. Uh, yeah. the pain is gone. It's, my neck is still stiff a little bit, but the pain's gone, and I'm able to tolerate it very well, and I've been able to sleep and don't wake up with a lot of pain or anything in my neck. So thank you for that, and praise God for that. So. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. So we've had, uh, we were willing as a church to lay hands on and pray over Jeremy. And he experienced healing from pain. We did the same thing for Linda not too long ago for that persistent cough that she had for months. And after we prayed for her, it went away. The more we're willing to pray for each other, the more we're willing to lay hands on each other, the more we're willing to exercise our faith in God, the more we'll see these things happening in the life of their church. So I just want to praise you, Lord, for the life of this man, Jeremy. And Lord, as I lift him up to you, I just pray for you to complete the work that you have begun in him, Lord. I pray for a release in his neck, Lord God, for looseness, for mobility, Lord God, in his neck and for continued freedom from pain. We commit it to your loving care, Father, and it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Other prayers? My son-in-law, Mike, is going for an angiogram tomorrow, and I just pray that things go well and that the doctors can successfully take care of the problems that he has, and I thank you. Yes, Lord, we commit, Mike, to your loving care, Lord. We pray all that needs to be done will be done, that nothing will be left undone, Lord God. We commit it to your loving care, and we commit to him, Lord God. Mike, we commit to your loving care, as well as the doctors, the nurses, and all who are attending to him. And for this, Lord God, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Tyler and I both had a successful trip going to Portland. We had a real short trip there, so it was... Hurry up, get there, get your appointments fast, and get out of here. So, but everything went very well, and we're so grateful that there were no travel hiccups. Amen, Amen for that, Lord. And uh, we thank you once again for all the work you're doing in, in Tyler's life, Lord God, and for the blessings of his mother who understands exactly all that he's going through. Uh, the blessings of that alone, Lord God, are beyond our understanding. We continue to commit him to your loving care, Lord God, and we pray, Lord God, not only 
for healing and wholeness in his life, but we pray for that promise of a new kidney for him, Lord God. Yeah. We commit it to your loving care, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. An update on my great-grandson, Gray, that we prayed for last week with his surgery. It went perfect. He's getting along fine. He hasn't really had that much reaction to the surgery, and we're just thankful, and I think there again we need to praise God. Yes, Lord, you are so good to us. Lord, you are just glorifying yourself in your name through answering our prayers, Lord God, because we know, Lord God, we have that confidence when we pray according to your will. We will receive that which we pray for. And so, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we give you all the glory. Amen. Amen. I have so much praise and gratitude for the Lord today. Um, I'm just so thankful that trying, the trying Satan might have done to try and prevent me from going to vision school last week, he did not win. And I'm just so grateful to have been there. It was such a joy and such a wonderful experience. And I encourage everyone, if you don't even want to go to missions, just to go to vision school to, to learn what God's vision is for us as his children, as his believers and followers of Christ. It's just so, so beautiful and so wonderful. And I'm just so thankful that I'm going to be going to vision school and completing it. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. Yes, it is something that every Christian should do given the opportunity and the chance. And the good news is there will be more opportunities in the future. Praise be to God. Any other prayers? Here. Where? Where? Oh, there she is. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, with Regina confessing that, she doesn't even know how her right's going to be, but she knows that God will provide. So I am really thankful that I've been praying that we have pioneers from this church to attend Vision School, and Regina stepped up, and then we have Danny too. Danny will be attending the youth, which starts next Friday, and they said they were going to be here. Uh, but anyway, maybe Amanda as well, since she will be bringing... Danny every week, so she might be attending too. So I'm so thankful to God that we have these pioneers. I call you pioneers from the Olive Branch Church. And I was just so glad too because God has somehow arranged my schedule that I can bring Regina. And then this following week, I can also bring her. And I told her, as long as God is going to fix my schedule, I will keep you bringing. I don't know when it will stop because, you know, schedule-wise, as long as you do your part in making your work schedule fit to the Thursday nights that you go. Together, we'll partner and, you know, bring this through. And so I'm really just thankful to God. And um, I'm, I'm like, this is just the beginning. And who knows, next season, we'll have more. But thank you, God, for, thanks, Regina, for stepping up. Because, yes, you're an answered prayer. And I'm just thankful how God has worked it all out. Glory to God indeed. I, I'm sure Regina learned so many things because, yeah, it was just first night. It was just so scriptural and just a lot of things in the future and the global missions movement and where we are right now. Right, Regina? Yes. So that. And then another joy for me was that we got to go visit my parents-in-law last yesterday in Sacramento. And that was really a good time because I haven't seen them in a long time. I haven't been able to to go to Sacramento. Time flew fast. I'm, I'm just enjoying being with them and then we had to go back home. But anyway, thank God for that. Thank God for my mom and dad and even my parents in the Philippines. I'm just so thankful because they're also doing well. And then another prayer. So now my prayer because we, Bob and I are really wanting to go to Israel. You know, we're gonna go for a short term mission this winter and it might be in January because January fits better with our schedule. And you know what's going on in Israel. The war on the front and the northern front with Lebanon is really kicking up and it seems like it's gonna happen. Israel has no choice but to go forward with this, um, with Hezbollah because they have to bring their people back to the north and they can no longer just let it be like that as status quo. So they do believe that it's a costly war and they know that it will really be a hard battle but they're ready. And they are hopeful because they have seen so many miracles already happening to them. 
with the recent you know, preemptive attacks that Israel has done and have been successful. Hezbollah, we have seen that you know, their own bombs and their own missiles are exploding on their own heads. That's a miracle several times, the suicide bombers in West Bank, you know, they exploded on themselves. Well, they're suicide bombers, but no one is hurt. So they're believing that God is with them and even with this war. And for us, you know, if the war continues and if Israel still opens, tourists going there and missionaries going there, we will go, even if the war is going. So pray, pray for Israel, pray for us as we're planning to really go to Israel and also pray for our nation. You know, as we are really getting into the elections, and so many things happening, assassination attempts, violence, and just so many things. You know, we see it's just ramping up the evil, the things that are dark and wicked. So we, our, our nation also needs prayer. So as we pray, pray for ourselves, you know, for our church, pray for our nation, and pray for the world, especially Israel, because it's the most important nation right now in all our lives. It impacts us one way or another. So those are my prayers, and I give God all the glory and praise for all these things. Amen. Amen. For those who are paying attention, we truly are living in biblical times. The things that are going on in the Middle East is exactly what the Bible says will be going on in the Middle East in the times that we are living. And so uh, absolutely, we should uh, be faithful to stand with Israel, as the scripture says. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. Those who curse Israel will be cursed. And so we want to share in God's blessings, not his curses. Amen? And so it is. And uh, in what is war, right? We have war on the streets of Fresno. We have war across our nation. We have war just about any place in the world that you want to go. So are we, would we not go because of war? No. No, because we trust in our Lord and our God. So if he provides the way, we're going. Amen? Amen. 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 So, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, that uh, you are the one who provides the way. You are the one who makes the way. You are the one who do who does these things in our lives, Lord God, in our families, our communities, our schools, in the life of the church, and in the life of the nations, Lord God. Nothing happens apart from you. And so for this, Lord, we give you thanks and praise that you do remain sovereign over all these things. And for those who trust in you, Lord God, we know that we stand on a firm foundation, Lord, which will never be shaken, one on which, Lord God, we can trust in for all of eternity. And so it is, Lord, that we just lift up all these prayers to you, Lord God. We thank you for all whom you've raised up, for all whom you have called, for all whom you have used in the life of our church and in the life, Lord God, of your kingdom. And Lord, we just continue to commit ourselves to your purpose and for your glory. And so it is, Lord, that we pray. We pray together as one body in Christ Jesus, praying the way that your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning again. Using your own Bible or a pew Bible, I invite you to turn to Isaiah 61, 8 through 11. He covered me with righteousness. For I, thy Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their re recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, 
and as a bride adores herself with her jewels. For the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and, and praise to sprout up before all the nations. Alleluia. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Mark 12, 28-34, the greatest commandment. You are invited to stand for the Gospel reading as you are willing and able. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he had answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that, he answered wisely. He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you join with me in prayer? Lord God, we thank you. And we give you praise, because we know, Lord God, apart from you, we have no hope. But in you, hope, in you, Lord God, our, our hope prevails. In you, Lord God, we trust. And in you, Lord God, we, we commit our lives. Lord, we know that all the goodness in our life comes from you. This is your word in us and through us and for us. So we give you thanks and praise and Lord as we meditate on your words this morning we just invite you to change our hearts to change the way that we see life and the way that you're working in the world give us eyes to see ears to hear we pray and so it is Lord and I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart, that they will be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 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 So you may or may not agree with me here, but I do believe one of the greatest advantages of growing up in the United States is the educational system. Now, it's not perfect, and even today saying that, it could be considered a gross understatement. It certainly falls short of the glory of God. But this much I can say, when children are raised within a school system in which the parents are invested as much in the education system as the teachers are, then are in a school system in which there are endless possibilities. Amen? Amen. Now when you're a child, you, you may not appreciate a good education as much as you do when you become an adult. As adults, we know the value of a good education. As a child, it is yet unknown. Looking back, the education I received, it exposed me to all the wonders of the world through arts and crafts, through the beauty of music, by imagining what it would be like to walk on the moon or to build a, a skyscraper that would part the clouds. Looking back and grateful for my history teachers, those who taught me about the founding of the country in which we live and the stories 
about all the different peoples and nations that are in the world. Art and music, history and science, mathematics, reading and writing, they have all fueled my imagination, preparing and equipping me to engage in the world in ways that lead to life, in ways that lead to beauty, in ways that lead to new creation. Amen? Amen. And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my upbringing. I'm grateful for my teachers and my pastors, and especially I'm grateful for my parents. For my parents were the ones to help me with my homework, with those difficult math problems, and with the many projects and science experiments that make up 12 years of education. And they were fully engaged with everything that I was doing, double-checking my math and correcting my grammar. And overall, I did well in school. But looking back, I, I now realize that I cannot take credit, at least not full credit, for my own accomplishments. For I would not have been able to accomplish all that I did if it were not for my parents' involvement with my life. But it wasn't simply because they helped me with my homework that I became successful. I excelled in my life because my parents would read bedtime stories to me before I was even old enough to go to school. I learned fortitude and endurance by working on projects with my father around the house and in the yard. I learned creativity and social skills by helping my mom plan and set up for family events and celebrations. I am who I am because I have loving parents who were invested in my life. I am who I am because of their love for my life. Love is not easy. Am I right? It is a wonderful thing to fall in love with another person, to plan, to build a life together, to start a family, and to build a future. However, it's not easy. To love another person means to rejoice when they are rejoicing, to laugh when they are laughing, even if you don't feel like there's any joy in your heart. To love another person means to mourn when they are mourning. To love another person means to drop everything that you are doing when they are in need. And to love another person means to allow them to make their own mistakes. And sometimes that's the hardest part of all. Love is not easy. Which is why the teaching of Jesus from today's gospel message is not easy. Jesus was in Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. And upon arriving to Jerusalem, he spent his days teaching in the temple. And as he would teach the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Herodians, they would work together to trap him in his words, to find a reason to arrest him and to sentence him to death. And before the week was over, Jesus would be hung upon the cross as a penalty for our sin. And as Jesus was teaching in the temple, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders, they came to him and they challenged his authority. Of all things, they challenged his authority, saying, who gave you authority to do these things? And as he continued to teach, the Pharisees and some of the Herodians, they came and attempted to trap him by asking him if it was right to pay taxes to Caesar. And after this, the Sadducees, they came to him to question him about the resurrection of the dead. They were coming at him from every corner. And while all of this was going on, there was a scribe who was listening. There was a scribe who was paying attention to all that the chief priests and the scribes, the elders, the Pharisees, and the Herodians were disputing. As they were disputing amongst each other and disputing with Jesus. And how Jesus answered each of their challenges well. For in him, find no fault. Now, I personally do not believe that this particular scribe was desiring to trap Jesus. I don't believe that was true. I believe he was sincere in his desire to understand which of God's commandments was the greatest. You see, by Jesus' time, the Jewish people they had accumulated hundreds of laws, 613 in all. 
365 precepts, which were negative by nature, and 248, which were positive. And one of the exercises that the religious leaders of Jesus' day enjoyed the most was discussing which of these divine commandments was the greatest. Which commandment is the most important of all, he asked. And Jesus answered, saying, the most important is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind. Jesus, in responding to the scribe, he begins his response by instructing for all of the nation of Israel to hear what the Lord has to say. Now the Greek word here, translated as to hear, is literally translated as to give an audience to. It's more than just listening. To give an audience to is something, to give an audience to something means to actually consider what is being said. It means to pay close attention to that which is being taught and to visualize how to apply the teachings to your own life. Amen? Amen. Jesus answered the scribe saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And we know, we know our God as a triune God, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we know that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they share in the same essence, in the same nature, in the same power. And there is a, a oneness to the nature of God in which the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit share. A oneness in which we come to share when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Jesus responds to the scribe's question with an invitation with an invitation to be at one with God. And then Jesus explains how to become one with God. Jesus tells him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. In saying this, Jesus was quoting from the words of Moses, the instructions that God gave to Moses for all the nation of Israel to follow, for all the nation of Israel to live by. But what does it mean to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? The primary thing that God asks for of anyone who truly believes in Christ and receives his spiritual salvation is a devoted love. A devoted love that is expressed with one's entire being. Can you imagine that? Do you know that experience of loving God with your entire being? Now the Greek word translated as heart, it refers to a person's thoughts, feelings, and mindfulness. And we see that in scripture, how it describes the working of the heart from the Old Testament to the New Testament. It's much more than a muscle and an organ and a, a body. It's a part of who we are. And to love God with all your heart means that God is the source and the object of your greatest desires, the source and the object of your passion. Hallelujah. The very core of your affections, they must be centered on Him. Hallelujah. It means that you are completely faithful and devoted to God and that His purpose is direct every area of your life. Yes, Not just some areas, every area of your life. Our love for God, it must be a life-directing love. It must be a love inspired by his love for us. Amen. Amen. In the Hebrew language, the word for soul, it refers to a breathing creature. In our Christian faith, it refers to a human being within whom is the breath of God. It refers to Loving God with all your soul, it involves expressing your deepest longings, your deepest emotions, and your convictions towards God in a way that honors and glorifies Christ. 
In the Jewish faith, the soul is the composition of the mind, the body, and the spirit. It is the entirety of who we are. The Greek word translated as mind involves a practice of deep thought, the exercising of the imagination, and a true desire for knowledge and understanding. To, to, love, the, to love our Lord, our God, with all of our mind means to, to think about who he is, to meditate on his word, to exercise our imagination in ways in which we can see God working in our lives, in the lives of our family, in the community, and in the world. And it involves a true and deep desire to know, to know God, a deep desire for understanding God. And these things happen only when we spend time with him. Loving God with all your mind, it shows that serving him is not just a matter of feelings or emotion. It is a deliberate act of your will. It means serving God with your intellect and seeking to please him with your thoughts, to please him with your ideas and the decisions that you make based on his word. Loving God with your mind requires doing that which you know is right Beyond how, beyond how you might feel, beyond your own feelings. Amen. The Greek word for strength it is best understood as according to one's ability. It carries with it the application of forcefulness and with might, again, the intentionality of being faithful to God. Loving God with all your strength means that your best energies and efforts go into serving God and his purposes. Looking for those opportunities to please him. It also means that you are willing to persevere in your faith when circumstances are challenging. And even when life is physically exhausting. At times, loving God may involve tough choices. And at times, loving God includes a willingness to share in the suffering of others. Primary thing God asks of anyone who truly believes in Christ and receives his spiritual salvation is a devoted love. A devoted love that is expressed with one's entire being. So let me ask you, how many hours per day do you spend expressing your love and devotion to God with your entire being? How much time and energy do you spend loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Now be honest, not with me, but with yourselves and with God. To be honest, to do all that Christ requires of us, I mean, even as a pastor, it seems like an impossible task. But what does Jesus say? Well, he agrees with us. He says, with man it is impossible, but not with God. For with God... All things are possible. Yeah. You see, loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength is not something that we can do on our own. It's not within our own ability. This is something that God works in us. Yes, hallelujah. In our reading from Isaiah this morning, God celebrates his promise of an everlasting covenant with Israel, a covenant in which we share. He says, I will faithfully give them their recompense their reward and their wages, and I will make with them an everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. This is not something we do. This is God's doing. He is the one who is faithful to give. He is the one who makes an everlasting covenant with us, which means he chose us to be in a covenant relationship with him. God chose Israel to be his witness to the nations. But as we've been learning, because of their unfaithfulness, their time as his witness has come to an end. When Jesus cursed the fig tree, he announced the end of the time of the Jews as God's witness to the world, preparing the world for a new age, preparing the world for the time of the Gentiles, which is commonly known as the church age, the time in which we are now living. And it is the responsibility of the church of Jesus Christ 
to witness to his saving grace in the world. In this, we must be faithful unless we're found to be unfaithful. But let us not be deceived. God has not forgotten his everlasting covenant with Israel. This remains. Amen. His covenant to restore them to the land that he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And to restore the throne of David, an everlasting dominion to which there will be no end. Then God says, their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are an offspring that the Lord has blessed. Hallelujah. Even today, Israel remains an offspring of the Lord, one which he has blessed. Hallelujah. Although today, Israel is the scorn and the hatred of many nations, but when Christ returns, he will keep his promise and he will restore Israel and he will fulfill his covenant with them. Hallelujah. And then they will be acknowledged by all nations as those whom God has blessed. Hallelujah. And the scripture says, then they will rejoice greatly in the Lord. Their souls shall greatly exult in our God. Hallelujah. And I love this part and I love I love studying the Hebrew and the Greek language because it's just so rich. For here, the Hebrew for rejoice, it means to be bright, to radiate, to shine brightly. When I saw Doug's shirt this morning, he was like, whoa, he's just like wearing my sermon. Shining brightly, radiating. The Hebrew word for exalt, it means to spin around. Come on, don't you remember? Don't you remember the joy of running through a grassy field on a sunny day? Feeling the warmth of the sun on your face and the feel of a cool breeze through your hair. I remember hair. <laughs> Spinning around and around again and again until you fall on the ground with the world continuing to spin around you. Don't you remember the joy of that? Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord? It is like that. Amen, Amen. Amen. In Isaiah, he describes the joy of God's people. For it is God who has clothed them with the garments of salvation. Hallelujah. It is God who has covered them with the robe of righteousness. Thank you, Lord. This is God's doing. Mm -hmm. To be clothed with garments of salvation, it means to be wrapped safe and secure in the arms of God. Remember when you were so small and your parents held you so tightly like that? Mm -hmm. The God. Hebrew word for salvation, it means liberty. It's a state of freedom. A freedom you can never know apart from Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To be covered with the robe of righteousness means to wrap oneself, to envelop oneself in the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. By spending time with him. Daily. The scripture tells us there, there's none who are righteous. Not even one. And as much as this is true, we can share in the righteousness of God. When we submit to the authority of Jesus Christ over our lives, then the righteousness of God it is imparted to us. And then we will be found pure and blameless on the day of the Lord's return. Not because of what we have done, but because of what he has done in us. Amen? Amen. For as the earth brings forth its sprout, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to, be, to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. Hallelujah. This is God's doing. It's not our own. We discussed last week about what it means to be created in the image of God. Because we are created in the image of God, we are capable of receiving his love. Hallelujah. And because we can receive his love, we can return his love to him. And because we can receive and return his love to him, we can share his love with each other. Amen. And this is not something we do because of who we are. This is something we do because of who God is. Hallelujah. This is God's work in us. This is his doing. The Lord God Almighty says, I will give them recompense. 
I will make an everlasting covenant with them. He says, I will clothe them with garments of salvation and with robes of righteousness. He says, it is I who will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before the nations. This is not our doing. We can take no credit. We cannot boast in these things. For this is God's doing. Praise God. Which leaves us to ask, what is our part? What are we supposed to do? Our part is to be faithful and obedient to do that which Christ has commanded us to do. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Look around. Your neighbors. To love each other. But even this we can't take credit for. For the love Jesus is speaking of is agape love. It is the love of God. It is a divine love. It is a part of God's very nature, a part of his very essence. And this, too, is something that God works in us. This is God's doing. Our part is to fully participate in the process, to take part in the work that God is doing in us. When Jesus saw that the scribe had answered him wisely, Jesus said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Now, to say that you are not far from the kingdom of God is to say that you are close to it. However, in this, the old saying holds true. Close on counts and horseshoes and hand grenades. If we are going to rejoice, rejoice and exult in the saving grace of Jesus Christ, we must be all in. There's no middle ground with God. To accept the forgiveness and promise of eternal life which God alone offers, we must confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and submit to his authority over our lives. We must be faithful to do all that Christ has commanded us to do, which includes faithful discipleship Amen. and the act of publicly declaring your faith in Jesus Christ by choosing to be baptized. Baptized in his name. For his purpose and for his glory. Amen. Not for our sake, but for his sake. Amen. For it is through faith in Jesus Christ that we are clothed in the garments of salvation. Hallelujah. It is through Jesus Christ that we are covered with the robe of righteousness. This is God's work in our lives. This is his doing. And it is for this and for all of these things that we give all praise honor and glory to God the Father, to God the Son, and to God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us take this time to lift up our offering to our Lord, our God. Please rise. I think I forgot to swap out the music, so we're a cappella this morning. Let us praise the Lord our God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Praise your most holy name. For Lord God, we know that all good things come from you. So we give to you, Lord God, that which is already yours. Bless those who have given these gifts. Bless those for whom they are given, and use them, Lord God, for your purpose, for your kingdom, and for your glory, we pray. And we pray all of this, Father, in the mighty name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Invited to remain standing for our closing hymn, Honey in the Rock. 
in our lives. For we trust, Lord God, that you are working in our hearts and in our minds, that you are giving us, Lord God, the strength that we need to be and to remain faithful to you in all of your ways. And so, Lord God, we thank you once again for your goodness in our lives, for all that you do in us and through us and for us, for our families, for our community, for the world in which we live, Lord God. We give you thanks and we give you praise. And so I pray, Lord God, your blessings upon all who are here today, all who are tuning in online, 
online, Lord God. Let your blessings be upon all of them. Fill them fresh with your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and use them according to your purpose and your desire this week for your glory, Lord God, we pray. Let us go out this day to love and serve our Lord, our God. Let us go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.